Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear and other random stuff. In this video, I'm going to take apart the video sphere and examine the clock inside. Then I'm going to give a quick test to the television. Finally, I'm going to prepare all the cabinet pieces for bleaching. Interesting mechanism and lots of dust. But this gives a pretty good idea of how this thing works. The clock mechanism with a couple micro switches. And at the back, no, that's not a relay, that's a buzzer. Just a coil and an armature, but no contacts. Now this clock has the motor mounted on the back. But why would somebody take out all the flaps? So there are no hours. There's nothing in there at all. What I think I'm going to have to do is transplant one clock into another because this looks very unusual. I, I've never seen this kind. This doesn't look like what you'd find in a normal clock radio. Maybe a custom unit, something specially for this TV. clock mounts to the bezel with four screws. The switch assembly held on with two long horizontal screws and one short vertical screw. And yes, the, the knobs will have to come off. Otherwise, this won't come through. They pull off, though not easily. I've removed the four screws that hold in the clock when the four screws don't match, that means somebody was in here before who wasn't very careful. At the bottom is a neon bulb, it glows red when it's on, that uh, illuminates the clock at night. Yeah, somebody's been in here before. There's no way that uh, JVC would just leave something unsoldered and just wrapped around in a very sloppy way. Not a good thing. Here's a clock radio made by Lloyd's. Same era, early 1970s. Flip clock, timer, something different in there. Looks like it keeps track of seconds, but I don't know. I'm going to see if I can use the guts from this and put it in the other one. First, I have to open this thing up. to say it will have to be exactly the same size if it's to work. Here's the left hand side of the clock radio motor. Large brass gear, micro switch behind it. Here's the left hand side of the television clock. Large brass gear, no solenoid. The motor is mounted directly behind. What I'm going to do is measure the width of the plastic assemblies that hold the flaps in place and see if I can transplant that whole thing into here. I need a clock 
which has numbers about 0.6 inches high. And from the left-hand side of the left number to the right-hand side of the right number, about one and three quarters inches. I've put the case back together so it can stand. What I'm going to do is start taking it apart so I can look into retro brighting the case. The back is held on with a few Phillips screws. And then what I might have to do is desolder. I don't know, either desolder or remove uh, slip-on connectors for this. It doesn't want to come out because of the base. So I'm going to have to take off the base again and see if I can remove this piece that prevents the bottom of the sphere from coming out. Well, it's amazing what you find when you slide the base over two more screws. The TV didn't want to come apart because the back of the antenna was hooked on the power bracket back there. But now that it's not hooked, it shouldn't be too hard to remove. There are slip-on connectors that you pull just straight out. Easier if you don't have a camera in your hand. There you go. And the same with the rest. Also what's interesting is something closer to the real color. Something to aim for when I start bleaching the case. This is the back of the case on the inside. And all these things will have to come out before I can attempt to retrobright it. But what I'm concerned about are these labels, these paper labels. I really like to keep them, but they don't tend to come out nicely. Normally you can just take a heat gun or a hairdryer and soften the adhesive on these labels, but not all labels. Some of them just won't come out. They'll just crumble. This is the inside of the television. Nothing very unusual. CRT and the deflection yoke. Live-act transformer. Small power transformer and power supply. All mounted on printed circuits. There's the one tuner and there's the other tuner. And another board underneath. Just a standard solid state television. One, two screws hold in the speaker. And one, maybe three screws hold in the antenna. The matching transformer and the switch for the antenna are held in with a couple of screws plus one for the terminal strip. I wish I could take that whole thing out, but I can't because they've molded it in. It's not going anywhere, and that sort of sucks. I tried to use a heat gun with this label, and all that happened is, as you see, it uh, crumbled. So what I'm going to do is cover it with lacquer, and that will really make it uh, impervious to the bleach while it's being bleached, and then Hopefully it will look no worse than it looks now. The inside of the case with all the hardware that, that can be removed. And uh, it will have to be cleaned before it can be bleached. Otherwise the bleaching will be uneven. I'm not so worried about the inside. In fact, I don't care about the inside. But the outside will have to be really clean. Now to disengage the tuner by removing three screws. Four large screws in the corners of the CRT hold the whole assembly to the plastic case. That last screw in the lower left-hand corner is the beast. But once that's done, then the whole TV can be dropped out of the case, and that's going to make it a lot easier to test. Those electrolytics might be a little long in the tooth and may fail. So uh, I'm going to use a Variac and slowly increase the voltage and see what happens. I should see a small picture, a small rasta, and then eventually a full picture. I should not smell smoke and I shouldn't hear a pop. 
just to make sure nothing goes south quickly, I've got a voltmeter on the filter capacitor. It's rated at 25 volts DC. And if during testing it ever exceeds 25 volts, I know to turn it off real fast. Here it goes with one hand on the camera and one hand on the switch. Okay, we've got uh, 26 volts in, 4.6 volts on that capacitor. Okay, 50 volts in. Let's turn off the light. 50 volts in, 8.1 volts on the capacitor. Sixty five volts in, ten point eight volts. And guess what? We got a raster. Don't expect to hear any sound because I've disconnected the speaker. Okay. Well, that's awfully good news. That's good enough for now. Back to the case. It's dirty. Uh, and somebody left a sequin in it. But I'm going to remove all the hardware that I can. That's the hardware that holds on the, the chain for carrying it. And then I can look into retrobriting it. To separate the base, from the rest, it looks like you align this stand so that you can see the screw in there, and then you can separate the two sections. It doesn't give me a lot of confidence in what holds this together, essentially one screw. There's the base separated from the rest of the TV. The tinted plastic visor comes off by carefully squeezing the ends inwards and you want to do it very carefully without scratching or breaking anything. Now, this TV has this funny mark over here which looks like I don't know what it was but it's either going to have to be ground off or, or sanded off something. Similarly, the name of the prior owner was on it somewhere, and it's got to go. So, a few things have to be done before this case is going to look beautiful. I've moved somewhere else in Mr. Brown's basement, where I'm going to wash these case pieces. But before I do that, I want to cover these, these labels with lacquer, so they don't get damaged by the water. After taping it off, I've applied some of this clear non-water soluble nail polish. It's basically a plastic lacquer and we'll see how it goes. I, I think I'm going to put on two coats. On the base, I've used Spree 9 and brush from the dollar store that's used to clean your fingernails and it works really well it's not too tough on the on the plastic on this piece it's a little bit more fragile because what they've done is they've painted the plastic and if I do anything I risk possibly causing the paint to fail and to come off the plastic so rather than do that I treated it very, very gently, just with a paper towel and hot water. And that seems to have done most of the filth. There are a few spots that appear to be nail polish or lipstick or something. I don't know what it is, but I don't want it. So I'm going to try to remove it with Goo Gone, which is pretty good on plastic. That's opposed to Goof Off, which is not. Between the Goo Gone 
and a very, very fine screwdriver to scrape off crud, I was able to get rid of most of the surface material that didn't belong. But I'm a little concerned about the unevenness of the yellowing. That may, it may lead to unevenness in the bleaching. We won't know until we try. All three pieces of the case have been cleaned and are now are just drying. The next step will be to bleach or retrobrite the case and see how closely we can bring them back to whitish. And that will have to be the next time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing if you did and perhaps even giving me a thumbs up. Can't hurt. Thank you so much for watching and come back to see the next installment.